The world's most dangerous gangs all have one thing in common. They are unyielding in their pursuit of maximum wealth. D Company is no different. Drug trafficking, racketeering, betting, terrorism, extortion, theft, money laundering, and murder are just a few of the crimes committed by Mumbai's and arguably Asia's largest underworld syndicate. Watch the video till the end to know all about the notorious D Company. The Beginning D Company was founded in Bombay in the 1970s by Dawood Ibrahim. Dawood started working as a smuggler and later started to expand his network and formed his own gang. He developed a lot of connections and as a result his organization grew rapidly. After Mumbai's economic collapse in the 1980s, newly created mafias stepped in to fill the void left by an absent economy. Territorial disputes arose as they expanded in power, resulting in major increases in bloodshed. In order to increase their dominance, the Indian mafias placed sanctions on local businesses to force them to bend the knee if they refused to participate in supporting them. Dawood Ibrahim cleverly utilized the situation and single-handedly brought all of the warring factions together under his command. Dawood Ibrahim personally convinced the infamous Chota Rajan, who began his criminal career by racketeering theater tickets, to join his gang. Chota Rajan was one of his key allies. Ibrahim told him to recruit 10 powerful gangs, and through their cooperation, D Company grew into one of the world's most feared and formidable mafias. D Company expanded its activities to Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, and even Kathmandu, employing the now defunct Nepalese royal family. D Company was virtually dominating India's most important economic and strategic center by the end of 1991. Anis, who was Ibrahim's brother, was in charge of the syndicate's violent characters, putting them to work on the protection and extortion side of D Company. Meanwhile, Ibrahim dealt with a multitude of much more unstable minor gangs to perpetuate other sorts of violence for his organization. He was able to accomplish this by making them completely reliant on him. Ibrahim would also have them permanently liquidated if they showed any semblance of independence outside of what was permitted. In exchange, Ibrahim promised these gangs advanced security from the city's dozens of other mafias. This protection came not just from rival gangs, but also from the police, where Ibrahim's influence was continuously increasing. The Authority As a result of everything, D Company was now well known throughout the Indian subcontinent, with Chota Rajan being widely famous as Ibrahim's home secretary. Another prominent affiliate of Dawood Ibrahim's was Tiger Memon. He was in charge of organizing the city's gold, silver, and consumer goods monopoly. These operations began in the 1980s, when the Indian economy was in desperate need of help, which naturally resulted in a boom in gold demand, which is normal during recessions. Dawood's operation was so huge, and he had such a firm grip on the gold market, that he could set the overall price gold could be sold for for the entire country. By the early 1990s, the gangster was raking in at least $250 million a year in India alone, having amassed a diverse property portfolio in Kathmandu, Karachi, and London. Every year, around 150 tons of gold and 1,300 tons of silver are carried to India under covert smuggling activities from the UAE alone, of which D Company is responsible for shipping 25 to 30 tons, worth between $1 billion and $1.2 billion. The Indian government estimated that he oversees a $10.2 billion empire. But considering the scope of Ibrahim's activities, particularly in money laundering, his empire is likely worth much more. In the latter half of the 1980s, the syndicate entered the film business to boost their social prestige by making themselves more visible as part of their public image campaign, as well as to expand their racketeering operations by finding a legitimate source of money laundering. Soon after, videos emerged of Ibrahim interacting with a number of India's top A-list actors and musical artists at opulent parties held at his numerous private properties in the UAE. Dawood had a vast network of connections among the film industry's directors, producers, actors, actresses, and investors. The mob's entry into Bollywood began at the production level, including only financing and film production, before progressing to extortion and assassination. Bollywood's financing was so dubious that the government refused to acknowledge it as a genuine corporation until 2001. Ibrahim's brother, Noura, was put in charge of D Company's film section, where he was primarily responsible for debt refinancing, which saw returns of up to 50% interest. The syndicate's control soon developed to the point that they owned and operated at least 60% of the industry, which they still do. The Turf Wars D Company had a massive amount of growth and reputation by the beginning of the 1990s, but it was not immune to the violence as splinter groups formed to challenge Ibrahim's authority. 
In the mid-1990s, tensions inside the Mafia began to rise. Ibrahim's success fostered ferocious jealousy, which resulted in defections that harmed his operations. Chhota Rajan, who was by this time one of D Company's most powerful individuals, was particularly proving to be a troublesome character. As the gangs disintegrated, a brutal turf war erupted across Mumbai. No one knew why it had escalated into a full-fledged conflict, although many suggest that all of it started due to a Hindu-Muslim conflict as there was a rise in Hindu fanaticism at the time, which was vehemently opposed to non-Hindus. What may have aggravated the situation was Ibrahim's retaliation for what he perceived to be Hindutva massacring of Muslims and destruction of Muslim history. On March 12, 1993, a series of revenge explosions ripped through Mumbai's Hindu neighborhoods. As a result, a slew of allegations were brought against Ibrahim, which even attracted the attention of U.S. officials. Businesses and Money Laundering The syndicate was active in the heroin drug trade, with narcotic sales bringing in around $500 million every year. This branch of the mafia dates back to the 1980s, when the gang focused on bringing non-heroin-based drugs into Western Europe. Ibrahim chose to use his enormous network of contacts in Dubai and Mumbai to switch to heroin in the 1990s while using Karachi as a stockpile center due to its close proximity to opium processing facilities in Afghanistan. Given the amount of money they were making from the opium trade, D Company was able to expand their branches abroad. Then there was the shipbreaking industry in India, which had immensely lucrative returns due to a lack of regulation by the government. The shipbreaking industry is primarily funded by corruption payments and cash-only transactions. D Company was found to have smuggled in contraband, firearms, explosives, and other items in this manner. Even the shipping yards in Indian Prime Minister Nakendra Modi's Gujarat state are a hotbed for this type of backroom activity. Profits from shipbreaking were reportedly routed into Ibrahim's gambling operations. Ibrahim's enterprise also included a sizable portion of illegal betting. The betting segment of the industry generates $1.8 billion in annual revenue. His clout extends all the way to the lucrative Indian Premier League, which the Indian Supreme Court first exposed in 2014. It generates betting pools via hawala transactions, as well as manipulating both the matches and locations to their own progression. D Company has complete control over the betting settings, rates, and procedure, resulting in large profits with a betting pool of up to $25 million at any given match. Ibrahim also has authority over the bookkeepers at the lower levels. His clout is so strong that he even manipulates the odds to assure a profit. D Company is also involved in counterfeit currency. The company has at least 61 billion phony currency notes of all denominations in the Indian market. It is unclear what the source of this information is, but the notes are of such good quality that forensic experts are impressed by the level of detail put into them. Consequently, seizures of these notes are relatively rare, which even prompted the Indian government to proclaim the 500 and 1,000 rupee notes to have no value at all. The Investment of a Lifetime as D Company was making so much money, Dawood Ibrahim needed a lot of large businesses to properly launder the money. D Company penetrated various worldwide stock markets, including those in Pakistan, India, and Nepal, as part of its continuous operations. This is possibly one of the most important investments the crime family has made, as it actively inhibits at least two of these countries' governments from putting an end to the operation. It also makes tracking D Company's actions extremely difficult for all of these countries. In addition, D Company stock options have also been linked to Gulf countries, as various shell firms are known to exist in India for the aim of obtaining funds and connecting them to the Indian Stock Exchange. D Company is suspected of laundering $120 billion in cash by investing it in the KSE at a period when Pakistan's GDP was just $130 billion. Through DB Realty and DB Atisalat, Indian intelligence agencies were able to link D Company to the 2G Spectrum dispute in 2011. Later in March, security at the CBI's Delhi headquarters was beefed up when it was reported that D Company was planning an attack to destroy documents related to the continuing investigation into the 2G Spectrum case. The notorious crime syndicate was ranked third on the FBI's world's 10 most wanted fugitives list in 2011. Rags to Riches D Company has about 5,000 members and 100,000 low-level gang members. Despite the fact that it all began in India, it is now operated out of India with Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, South Africa and Saudi Arabia being among its other locations. Dawood Ibrahim has made a significant amount of money and is thought to have amassed a personal fortune of around $7 billion. Given their secrecy and illicit activity, there are rarely solid estimations for what mobsters are worth, but Ibrahim's figures are different. 
Ibrahim, along with iconic Colombian cocaine drug lord Pablo Escobar, is one of history's most verifiably wealthy mobsters. D Company also has a significant presence in the Indian film industry, having successfully penetrated Bollywood and being responsible for film distribution, piracy, and even the assassination of film directors. Unsurprisingly, Ibrahim is considered the godfather of criminal organizations in India, with Bollywood making hit movies like Shootout at Lokandwala, Once Upon a Time in Mumbai, and Shootout at Wadala. That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video. And if you did, show some love and hit that like button. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.